So, let's see, let me get this video up on my phone so I can look at your guys' comments. Yubitubi. And I can also hear my audio to make sure that's working as well. Yeah, so. I was practicing oh. to be usher for the wedding. Let's stop, stop. Okay. Why isn't it showing up? Usually it shows up right on the first page. No. There it is. Hooray. Okay, cool. Thanks. I appreciate you. Let me know you could hear me. All right. So, uh, I'm painting some parts for uh, somebody named Todd, which is funny because that happens to be my name too, but these parts are not for me. And uh, so, um, I'm now under the steps of painting the torch. Oh, I forgot to bring... Here's a torch right here. It's unpainted. So, here is an unpainted torch, how we start from scratch. And if, if you ordered my sets that were raw, you get a torch like this. Now these torches go into the castle just like that, or into the um, piece just like that. And then of course they light up whoop, if you have some sort of light inside there. Now, unfortunately you probably can't see this light very well because it is uh, so light in here. Okay, lights off. Turn this one off. Oh, I got to turn over the overhead lights. Oh, I tripped on my painting sheets. There you go. You can see it now. Kind of glowing there. Ooh, ah. There it is. Before it's painted. Oh, bright lights. Lights on. There we go. All right. Did you find out who ordered? Oh, yes, I did. I figured out who ordered the Flaming Swords. Thanks for asking. Yep, they've already been shipped off to the guy, and uh, he seemed pretty happy. Hopefully, he's happy when he receives them, too. All right, so let's talk about how to paint these. Um, the first thing you have to do is prepare your flames. So what I like to do to prepare my flames is I will get um, a put on a paper cup or something and a plate. And then I will uh, make two holes in it. And then when I paint them, I will, uh, well, actually, I guess before I paint them, I actually uh, don't put the, the cup on first. And I paint this side right here. You can see it's nice and shiny, shiny. And I paint it with the clear gloss. It's so after I hit it with 400 grit sandpaper and some wet sand. And you can see the difference once you hit it with the clear gloss between the painted and the unpainted. And then the top, while it's in the plate, just like so, I hit it with the matte finish right here, and that gives kind of the cloudy look on the top up here. Well, actually, that hasn't been done yet. There you go. And you can kind of see the difference between one that's... Actually, it looks the same. Not much difference at all, but you get the idea. And again, use 400 grit sandpaper first, and then paint it. Now, you're probably wondering, why do I hit it with clear before I paint it? That is a really good question. If you try to paint it like this, the, the way it is, the paint won't adhere to it very well. It'll be kind of a mess. But if you put this uh, matte finish on first, then these clear inks will just stick really well to that matte finish. So I've learned the hard way of trying to paint stuff without putting a clear coat on first, and it just doesn't work. Now I also have these little mixing containers here that I use to mix my paints in. And for this particular project, I have a link to these game inks also in my description. We are going to use the yellow and red only. So here they are close up so you guys can see them. All right. And then once those are dry, I will then take it downstairs and in my cool plate cup here and paint them again with another matte finish over the top. So that is the plan for this. Did I turn that light off? I did not. There we go. So let's go ahead and get some things to protect my desk from getting all ruined. I got my painting trays here that I've used many times in the past. Oh, the brushes. These brushes I use right here, you can see they 
they all have a, an angle to them. I like the angle because you got the, sh the tip here you can use. It's super sharp, or you got it wide across the top. Now, I put a link in the description for these two as well, for the brushes. So if you guys need to pick up some brushes, my favorite ones are those ones I just showed you that has the angled tip. So it just seems to work really well. All right, we are ready to paint. Are you ready to paint? Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I got my AA light. Hey, hey, let me put my light on here. There we go. Now we can see what we're doing. Hey, the mines, the soul mine. Thanks for joining us. Pop actor. Thanks for being here. He says, I have a mission for you. Invent a way to insert the sky LED into the vintage battle ram. Hmm. Interesting. I'm not sure what the sky LED is, but um, contact me on Facebook, man. We'll see if we can figure something out. All right, so let's go ahead and start painting these. So first off, I need yeller. Old yeller. I'm going to hit that tray at the edge of that thing all the time when I'm looking through this camera. It's really hard to paint through a camera sometimes. Um, it's kind of weird. Anyway, so here's my yellow again for those that just came on. And I got my little cup here. I'm going to squirt some yellow in it. That's okay if I put too much yellow in because I'm going to use the same yellow later on to mix with some red to make orange. So it's okay to have too much yellow to start with. But with the red, be very careful with. The red is super strong and it will overpower any color you have. Surprisingly, though, when you paint the red onto the flames, it's not quite as uh, strong as the yellow is when you actually paint it on. But for color, coloring, it's pretty strong. All right, I'm going to pull this one out. I like to hold it in my hand. I want to hold your hand. All right, let's go ahead and just dip some yellow in here. Let me back this up a little bit so you guys can see what I'm doing here. Just getting the yellow on here. And I want to be careful to only paint the bottom half of this. If I paint too much, then I will end up ruining the red later on. Yeah, that's the way I want to do it. And it's so weird too, as you print it, you can see it turns clear um, instead of foggy. So that's why I'm going to put the matte coat on again, because I want it to be foggy when it is all done. All right, and I actually paint this all the way up to the bottom of the flames. Just like that. There we go. That's looking pretty good. And I'll stick this back in the cup. And now to grab the other one. You can see the way that yellow just adheres so well to it. Now, technically, I went to paint this bottom so far down. I probably shouldn't have painted that one so far down. I was don't know what I was thinking. It's kind of weird to get on video. Sometimes you do things. It's like, oh, yeah, I guess I don't you know, usually paint that far down. But it'll be fine. It doesn't really affect the form, fitter function. Form, fitter function. There we go. Dun, da, da. Okay, now to make my orange, I'm just going to take one drop of red. One drop, man. And I'm just going to add it to this cup right here. And mix it right in. Again, if you use too much, it's going to turn pink on you. So you just want just a little bit. So you can see it looks almost more red than orange now. It's so annoying how it does that. It's just uh, the red is just so strong compared to all the other colors. All right. hard to do so I need to watch it myself on the 
in real life instead of watching through the screen. And you're trying to do is get it just a little bit higher and then get the high spots of the flames. You want the high spots of the flames to be orange and red. Because when the flames in real life are going, the tips of them, when they stick out the furthest, are more red than everywhere else. Oh, I forgot one of my colors. I have to come, I have to go right out and snag my other red. I forgot that. Not too shabby. You know, we got some orange on there too. I'm gonna let that sit for a second while I go grab my other red paint. You guys can look at the coolness. I'll zoom it in. Ooh, uh, I'll be right back. Yep, ketchup. All right, my other red I use is this one right here, and I should have grabbed this earlier. This is just for the very tip edges of it. And you can see there's, there's the red that I use. And this red also paints on clear too. It's really kind of cool. All right, now that we have our red and orange on there, I'm now gonna grab the lid to my mess here. I'm gonna use just red only. Only like about a drop, maybe two tops. It's just ever so slightly. You don't need a lot. I'm going to take my smaller brush here da -da -da, and just mix that up. Now it's going to look really strange at first. Um, as it starts to mix more, it will make, make more sense how it looks. Okay, so let's do the tops of these. Now you can see it looks very pinkish. And that's what happens when you paint this clear red on. I'm gonna also hit these highlights here. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to be out of frame. Just hit all those high sp spots as well. Just makes it look a lot more natural. Actually, you know what? Those do not look too bad. Not too shabby. See how, oops. See, I'm just kind of going over all the flames, getting all the high spots with the red a little bit. Just, just slightly, just to kind of blend it all in. You don't want just like uh, strips of color. Actually, you know what? Those don't look too bad. I may not have to use my clear red at all. I find sometimes I have to use the clear red on the very tips of uh, flames sometimes, but that's not looking too bad at all. I may not use the red at all. So never mind on that last red color I brought out, because this actually did just fine the way it is. All right, dun, dun, dun. and now that is it. My flames are painted, they're ready to go. And uh, um, next I'm gonna take them downstairs and put on my final matte finish, and then I'll light them up. I'm trying to think if I should do this live or not. They are still pretty wet. I guess I could have, uh, they're actually drawing pretty fast.
Yeah, you know what? I think I am going to do that. I know it's going to make the video a little longer. You guys can fast forward later on, those who are watching this not live. So I think I am going to run down and put a clear coat on it so you can see how it looks uh, complete and fully flamed out. Oops, I'm out of range again. Out of range, out of focus. That Hebrew guy. Okay, I'll be back. I'm gonna hit it with my clear mat and I'll be right back. In the meantime, you guys can watch the sorceress in her chair. People will come in late and be like, what are we watching? Hey, Delaxorian, I also have the artistic ability of a shoe, so I totally understand that. Basically, I've just practiced off and on for years, but I'll be right back. at those i'm gonna let you guys stare at those while i go grab my heat gun so you can dry them quick and test them out so i will be right back again like man this guy's leaving all the time I gotta find a way to fan these two at the same time while I'm... Let's see, this will create wind. Not a lot. This is my heat gun. Ooh, ah, uh, Wigner. And you can see them change from clear to more matte as it dries. Oop. Fan in the flames. All right. A couple more fanning of the flames. I 
And let's kill those lights and see how these look. All right. Where's my phone? Lights off. Nope, not my wife's blow dryer. It is actually uh, my Wagner heat gun. All right, so these are all done now. Ooh, ah, uh, so we got red at the top, orange in the middle, and yellow, and interlaced throughout the flames. Let's go ahead and load them into the Tower of Power. And now let's get some lights. Boop. And another light. one dead nope oh bright light all right let's kill this light here what is the flame flavor that's funny oh there we go look at that that looks pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with it. Now, I personally like it better when I put the light on yellow instead of white. Here's the yellow button here. I'm going to show you the difference. So there's white. There's yellow. Ooh. Yep. I got to find the white button again. There's the white. So I'm going to put it back on white so you guys can see the difference. Come on. Focus, focus. Focus. Oh, I can't focus in the dark. Okay. Oh, that's red. Oh, oh, now I'm pushing all the wrong buttons. So I can't see what I'm doing. At least I should put it back on yellow. Oh, well. I can't change it now. So, there you go. Yes, it should have some music going. It's kind of cool. It's crazy. Even this light, you can see the slight difference. Let me turn them off so you can see what it's like when they're off. Burp. So they're kind of boring when they're off, but... You should get the bulb that flickers. I actually include the bulbs that flicker normally with these sets. So I actually do have the flickering bulbs. Let me... Grab those bulbs so I can show you what you get normally if you don't pay for the upgrade. Since you asked. All right, I am back with my tea lights. And if you don't pay for the upgrade, Actually, you get these lights regardless, they come with it, and they are the flickering little lights. They're not as bright as uh, the other lights, but we'll go and try those so you guys can see the flickeringness. Actually, this goes, I'll leave it that way. What the heck? Let's turn off the light. There you go. There's the flickering lights. Ooh, uh, it gives kind of a haunted, haunted house kind of vibe to it. So yes, the flickering lights do come with them. If you buy raw, you just get the... Actually, I think you get them if you buy just the... Non, I don't remember how it all works. I got it written down on my notes, but the ones do come with the flickering lights standard. The Attorney Olympics are officially inaugurated. I like that. Yeah, to each their own. I, I like the brighter lights, but yeah, people's lines do like the flickering better, so. These are the ones that everyone gets when they buy them that get, get the painted ones for sure. I think I've thrown them in some people's kits for the unpainted ones, but they don't come standard, but usually I throw them in anyway. All right, that is it. They are painted. I am happy. 
I'm sure that guy Todd will be happy when he gets in with his set. Mike, if he likes the the flickering better too, we should get. Oh yeah. All right, Cringer is hungry. Yes, Cringer is lurking in the dark back there, hungry. I still need to fix all my lights. I got another one burned out over there. Yeah, they're slowly going out on me. I think what's going out is the ability to turn off and on, not the ability to, uh, or not the actual lights, because I leave them turned. They, they say in the war in the instructions to untwist them, to not kill the batteries. But a lot of times I leave them twisted so they'll be ready to uh, to be used. So I think I have undone myself by killing the batteries and letting them just sit there. So I noticed there was one I couldn't turn off the other day. It just stayed on, and it's like I can't turn it off. The oh, it's so bright, bright light, bright light. But I have a whole bunch of batteries um, coming in the mail. I believe like next next Tuesday or something. All right. Oh, I can't see Cringer. There we go. That's what I turned the lights on for. Oh, poor cringy. Cringier. All right. That is all that I got. I will see you guys next video. Like, subscribe, share with your friends. And uh, Todd, if you're out there watching, I'm still working on your parts. I should have them done painted hopefully today or tomorrow. So that would be cool. Then I can mail them out to you Monday, hopefully. Maybe even tomorrow. Today is only Friday. So we'll see. All right. Like, subscribe, tell you guys, tell everyone to, to uh, come check out my channel. And that is it. Good journey.